Clean Technologies has just offered their newest investor slide presentation here in 2024. We're going to jump in and we're going to go over the presentation, get my reaction to some of what is conveyed, uh, both as a recap for 2023 and more importantly, what to forecast in 2024 and beyond. Before we get started, uh, I am a bullish share owner in the company. All of my stock purchases and my most current sale for tax purposes is provided in the description below, as well as any disclaimers, you can review those prior to reviewing this content. Please understand that this is my opinion, and it is more on a bullish conviction on the company, but to looking to convey the information as uh, Aduro puts it out um, and to get my reaction on what I think the information means and to push that out for the greater audience that is interested in the story as it is unfolding uh, before our eyes. And welcome into the Aduro Clean Technologies updated investor slide presentation for 2024. Very excited to share my thoughts. Uh, I've reviewed this now a couple of times. I invite you to adurocleantech.com uh, for the latest um, uh, version of what has been a phenomenal couple of years for Aduro Clean Tech. They do a great job in summarizing the many accomplishments in uh, years past, uh, especially the most recent year closing out of 2023, and more importantly, what to expect from the company here in 2024 and beyond. So if you uh, want to review this in more depth, you can find it under the Investors tab at adurocleantech.com. I invite you to kick over there and uh, update yourself on the newest edition. But let's get those of you guys unfamiliar with the Aduro Clean Technology story. Uh, this slide says it all. Uh, developing chemical technology platforms that transform low value material into higher value resources. And, uh, you know, we come to think about that. Um, where the low-value material would just normally, because of its um, economic challenges, end up in the landfills and in our oceans. Zaduro's uh, technology really does sport the ability not only to take that low-value material in-house, but uh, actually up upcycle it uh, into a material that can be used in maybe even more valuable products. So. Um, this slide really does codify what it is that Aduro is doing with their strategic goals and uh, deploying uh, their technology worldwide. A little more in-depth on this slide here. This photo is um, of R2. Uh, I've actually visited this uh, very uh, reactor, was able to walk around it, was able to look at um, how well this is constructed and uh, putting forward in their customer engagement programs and having visitors come in and actually see the power of their hydrochemolytic technology. But for new uh, investors and new researchers of this project, um, this is 10 years in the making. And I think coupled with the idea that the market cap is in between now having uplisted to the quality board markets and sometime down the line for a potential uplisting, this opportunity is from a first look perspective for uh, especially retail investors uh, to look at the company here and, and, and ascertain the value that is surrounding their patent protection that is outlined on this slide as well, as well as the multiple applications that can be utilized with their technology, not only to advance their initiatives with plastic, I would presume accelerating starting really uh, last year, the fall of 2022, and into 2024, but uh, just as exciting for me is the continued advancement uh, and research into the technology and really infusing those projects that they've got for some of their other initiatives, uh, heavy oil upgrading, uh, as well as some other initiatives that uh, by nature of some simple tweaks of their uh, patent protected technology, they can really leverage this into multiple SKUs for the company. So it's going to be exciting to see how they advance uh, over the course of this year and, and over the coming years. This slide here represents a total uh, breakdown of the total addressable markets in the multiple uh, verticals that Daduro could pursue over the coming years. You can see here um, the plastic um, uh, addressable market at $120 billion, as exciting as that is. Um, Aduro really sports the ability to branch out across multiple markets, and this slide speaks to that opportunity. 
And the key here is really understanding the uh, economic benefit of a Duro's Kamalysis technology compared to um, uh, many other players in the space trying to address this massive plastic problem that we have. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in subsequent slides, but really what it comes down to is uh, operating at lower uh, input temperatures, therefore driving the cost down and still achieving um, renderings on the back end through their recovery rate that is just off the chart uh, when compared to other solutions that are working in the same space as Aduro. I'll be closely analyzing Aduro's progress and technological uh, updates and announcements as they push the limits of this technology with regard to contaminated feedstock and something that is a little bit more expected and anticipated once they get into the pre-commercial state. Um, being in this phase right now with the customer engagements, they are gleaning all of the research that they can to help them in preparing to go to that pre-commercial state. And that is really my focus on evaluating the uh, progress and the milestones met. Uh, through the announcements that uh, Aduro uh, puts forward to share owners in the company. Um, so we are very well informed on the progress of, of where they are uh, in kind of the beginning stages of, of really showcasing what it is that uh, this technology can mean for customers, uh, really getting an idea of how the technology can augment existing businesses uh, and, and their specific needs. Not all company is the same, and every company is going to have different needs, and it will be up to Aduro to look to uh, identify those gaps, uh, close those gaps, and adjust accordingly to uh, ensure that the client's best needs are, are met through the deployment of the technology. Just a snapshot of the many 2023 achievements. Most are augmented with a press release which can be found on adurocleantech.com. Some of these will link you over, like the video there, uh, which I think is probably one of the coolest videos that Aduro has come out with thus far. It's the one on your far right, uh, hydrochemolytic plastic upcycling. If you really want to understand um, where this company looks to go into the future regarding their vision, just watch that couple minute video. You'll totally understand why this uh, opportunity is as exciting as we all believe that it is. And just a cool insight on the upgrading of the uh, laboratory and the new office space for Aduro. Uh, very well earned. Um, this is a, a long time in the making. This was going on when I made my site visit uh, up to Sarnia, the current home of the R2, where the ongoing tests are, are happening. But uh, new, uh, really state-of-the-art uh, uh, to really showcase uh, their technology. So when they've got customers come in, you can expect that it's going to be uh, a top-notch presentation by Aduro uh, as indicative by how cutting edge their technology is. So they're making a little bit of money through their customer engagement program. Um, it's great to see this company as small as it is and really at the beginning stages of showcasing this technology uh, that they've bought, brought some major players in uh, to uh, really engage in the um, the showcasing of the technology, number one, but also to help in accelerating the learnings uh, that are going on uh, by these initial uh, test results, which are fascinating. The company just released a 95% recovery rate on that. Uh, again, once we start to evolve into more of the contaminated streams, uh, and, and finally, some of the most robust of contaminated streams that we could potentially uh, expect, which will define the, uh, the, the, the range of what a Duro can sport in way of what the technology can handle um, and then what it can render on the back end. And then we can start to derive some numbers on how efficient this technology can be uh, at both pre-commercial and eventually commercial uh, scale. And here, growing the team smartly and effectively. Um, you can see there, when I talked to Anil uh, up in Sarnia, uh, at about the same place that those uh, new six operators uh, are standing in this photo, 
uh, looking to really be the technical oversight during the customer engagement program. He uh, disclosed to me that they were looking to to get that. Um, and that's where R2 really does provide a multifaceted benefit, can be utilized as a training tool, uh, not only as um, a training tool, but a showcase to, to the technology. Um, and they need operators to do that. To the right here, three phenomenal additions to the Aduro team. Um, uh, Eric Appleman, uh, Marie, and uh, Stephanie as well to be brought in in 2023. What a fantastic addition to the Aduro team uh, as they look to evolve and expand their reach, already having footholds uh, both here in North America, but more importantly, I think, uh, abroad as well. Over the next couple of years, we can expect that the um, uh, material complexity uh, will increase as well as the revenue generating potential, uh, as well as, you know, an idea of when this pot potentially could materialize. There's a couple of graphs that I would uh, bring your attention to in the new investor slide deck, which gives some insight on when we expect these um, this progression to happen. And it's not going to happen tomorrow. I think it's very important for investors to understand that your f first look to the company is being provided right now. How long that first look is provided for would-be investors could be as short as next week. It could be as long as a couple of years. I don't know. And I don't presume to know. What I do know is if I'm interpreting this information correctly, Aduro wants to convey that they are going to progress calculatively. They are going to progress conservatively, yes, and they are going to try to glean all of the available information through each stage to lend itself uh, impactful to the next stage. Once we get into the pre-commercial state, it's going to be fine-tuning, and to the commercial state, off and running. And if we're going to rely on a revenue uh, stream uh, through licensing the technology, we have to make sure that all of the learnings that are to be made available through uh, this evolution uh, are captured and incorporated into the final iteration uh, of deployment in Aduro's technology. You'll want to pay close attention to this slide as it goes through the different varying degrees of um, material complexity. It really just means the, um, uh, the, the, the dirtier or the soiled, um, more common plastic waste that may be um, more commonplace um, without the, um, you know, the need for, for cleaning the material. Now, Eric Appleman specifically has spoke about this um, on a couple of different occasions. If you picked up the uh, panel review, uh, from last fall, he spoke about Aduro setting itself apart to be able to play along these three different um, verticals, for a lack of better terms here, and that the bottom vertical with the clean streams will be the most competitive of all of the streams uh, because a lot of the technology out there can only compete in that realm. As you step up to the more complex material, this is where I will look to be evaluating Aduro's ability to set themselves apart and really um, solidify what has been conveyed by Aduro in their ability to deal with contaminated waste plastic. Now, I will bring your attention to the Game Changer program and the current phase that the company is in right now in the Game Changer program, and that is dealing with contaminated plastic. So this company has not only proved the bottom tier here, but the middle tier that is uh, displayed for you on this slide. So it's a combination of the first two tiers. I would question whether or not they are looking to deal with some of the more mo complex or the dirtiest waste streams out there currently. Uh, I don't know what work has been done. I have not picked up on any conveyance of those tests but the first two, absolutely. And to start to dabble into the potential of the hydrochemolytic technology as it relates to a more dirtier waste stream when it comes into and is subjected to the technology, what kind of outputs that we could get on that. And we'll just need to track this uh, evolution uh, along this graph uh, over the coming years. 
and um, hopefully Aduro can really sport some uh, impressive results when it comes to their ability to not only deal with the bottom tier uh, of waste, but also the top uh, tier of the waste streams uh, in um, in recycling these these plastics along these different purity types of scales. Eric Appleman presented the best explanation of the value chain and where Aduro would fit in across to multiple uh, arenas in the value chain and, and looking to uh, augment and improve uh, not only their application with their uh, revolutionary technology, but understanding what the customer needs are. And in Eric's uh, elegant explanation, it really doesn't do any good to provide a phenomenal product if they're not meeting the demands of the customers. And so to understand this value chain will certainly uh, define Aduro's uh, not only understanding of the industry, but where they can potentially uh, augment and penetrate uh, and, and even in some cases maybe even define uh, new markets along this value chain as the technology develops. Uh, this slide was uh, a nice summary of, of the 2024 strategic outlook. I, I found it to be somewhat vague. I don't, I don't mean to be negative in my application here, but, but my expectations for 2024 are, are in line. They are not over the moon. Um, this uh, adding to the patent book, uh, Ofer Vikas spoke about this, that will be a, a positive uh, piece to this overall story. Continuing to add value for share owners, uh, I've owned the company now for over a couple of years, and to continue to make progress on that, I expect that as well. Uh, what milestones are going to come out specifically in 2024 are yet to be determined. And I think that this slide was uh, intentionally put out there to say, look, we will prov be providing multiple announcements along each of these fronts. Uh, but to, to remain a little bit vague into what they promise here in March, early 2024, I, I think is prudent. But it does speak to my muted expectations for 2024. They've got a lot of work to do. And I, I think it is incumbent upon investors who are looking at this as a first look, where R3 plastics are alluded to in this to continue the work and design for the tons per scale pre-commercial state R3, which is really my bullish thesis. Is that going to happen in 2024? I, I contend no. Uh, will it happen at some point in the future toward 2024, end of 2025, potentially uh, some of the dates that have been floated show maybe beginning of 2025 at the earliest, but I'm not holding my breath here. What does that mean for 2024? It means that patients will need to be deployed. Um, whether the re-rating of the company will happen in 2024 is yet to be determined, whether or not that happens or not. If it does, great. If it doesn't, no problem. Um, we know that there are going to be milestones in 2024, but there are also some realistic expectations that will not be happening in 2024, uh, more so into the latter years of 2025, 2026, and 27, as we'll see in some of the revenue projections and potential milestones for accelerated revenues into the future. We have seen this slide before. This is the licensing model. Uh, de demonstrating the step up, uh, obviously, in the amount of uh, recycled material that can be produced per day, uh, 25 tons per day, as opposed to a 225 uh, ton per day, using multiple reactors, um, much more personnel, of course, uh, involved to that, generating the revenue as appropriate for the size and scale of the operation. I glean a couple of things from this slide. Aduro and Ofervica specifically has talked about the dynamic or um, really wide-ranging opportunity that Aduro has to not only cater to the smaller operators out there that need recycling service all the same, but also to upscale to the larger uh, producers out there and enjoy the uh, really the symbiotic revenues that are generated on the gross margins, both sharing with the licensee uh, and then Aduro making their kickback for actually um, leasing the technology to these respective players in the industry. 
Um, so th this is a, a phenomenal slide. It's been a legacy slide here that Aduro has put forward in conveying to share owners specifically what Aduro is thinking for uh, potential revenue down the line once we get through these um, or early stages of technology development, uh, as well as uh, pre-commercial work that needs to still go into fine-tuning the technology. This is one of the most important slides that Aduro has released to the grander forward-facing public audience. Specifically, share owners should really take note to what Aduro is trying to communicate here. Um, we, we are toward the left here, this graph, and I, I don't want to scare anybody off to this, but I, I think it really does speak to what we could potentially be looking at over the next four years, let's just say. Uh, guys, four years in the investing realm is nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. But what these guys are looking to do over the next four years is nothing short of impressive, where the non-recurring revenue that is being garnered now through the customer engagement program uh, should ramp, ramp up a little bit and start to augment some of the losses that are being incurred now by the company. Um, we are actually hoping that those relationships turn into uh, more specific agreements between those said companies and Aduro, which will in turn transfer into reoccurring revenues going forward at times X number of companies that are engaging with the Duro. So their ability to transition uh, these customer engagement, these first looks for a Duro is going to be pivotal in seeing this uh, forecast through. And I believe that they'll be able to do it to bring your attention to the initial commercial units break even point sometime in 2025 would have us understand that as we march along these beginning stages of the financial forecast it is imperative for us to continue to evaluate that progress uh, any acceleration or shift to the left in the progress uh, i will remind you that this slide was actually put forward prior to the game changer program so all things considered, I think there is more of a potential to shift to the left. However, Aduro has doubled down on presenting this as presented prior to to show a shift from non-reoccurring -re revenue to reoccurring revenue uh, as those memorandums and agreements are struck with these larger companies. And it's not going to take very, very many uh, for me. Uh, the real solidification is going to be their first deal struck with a major institution, and that's going to be game over to me because that's going to prove that they have the ability to take those customers through the trial period and then transition them into longstanding customers with Aduro going forward. Not only will the customer engagement program provide some revenue I might suggest is somewhat uh, immaterial at this stage, um, the company will continue to offer its warrants and its options to continue to subsidize its business. I would bring your attention to the current share float, just shy of 100 million shares, which is um, one of the smallest share floats that I've ever seen, uh, coupled with the idea that the insider ownership is 42%. I believe Ofer owns half of that at 20%. So, if you want to align yourself with the uh, upper echelon with Aduro, just take a quick look at this slide and it will tell you that you are aligned with the right people. Okay, um, We try to convey this to anybody who wants to come and listen and take notice of this story, but make no mistake about it. My alignment is not with the normal everyday average retail investor. Uh, my alignment in my share thesis and my bullish conviction on this company has to do with the internal share structure, which not only is a, a, an opportunity for the uh, company to raise funds in a non-dilutive manner, but also to incentivize, if you read the notes on this, to incentivize certain milestones to be met to unlock additional shares to those folks and not before then. And that is a phenomenal, very unique opportunity here that Aduro has put forward to really allow share owners to share in this appreciation on this path to commercialization for the company. Just a quick snapshot of the management team at Aduro Clean Technology, a very impressive team of the who's who 
um, in the industry with the first two, Ofer Vicus and Mark Trigston, both uh, co-founders uh, of the company. And uh, Mina is one of my personal favorites with regard to, and, and I'm really curious to see how he marshals um, this uh, financial landscape going forward for the company, because I think he's right on uh, and a very critical piece to this puzzle. Uh, and then the addition there at the end with Eric Appleman coming on board really just adds another dynamic to this and, and, and also solidifies um, the technology and listening to Eric convey what he sees on the inside and the opportunity that exists with Enduro. And I'd like to thank all the viewers for tuning in for the totality of this new review of the Enduro Clean Technologies Investor Slide presentation. Very cool stuff. This can be found at EnduroCleanTech.com under the Investors tab. If you require any more information, please reach out to either uh, Abe Dick. He's the head of uh, corporate development and investor relations uh, and over Vicus has also placed his contact on this as well. For those of you guys who don't know, Aduro is uh, uh, traded on the U.S. markets, OTCQC, under the ticker symbol ACTHF. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll kick you back to conclude the video. So that does it for our review of the Investor Slide presentation. I hope, hopefully you enjoyed uh, this review, and uh, to track the progress of Aduro here in 2024, we'll continue to put forward any uh, news updates. There's a lot that is ongoing with the company uh, right now, and we're just awaiting on some of the final conclusions uh, from some of those companies, and we're eagerly awaiting those, those reports as they're uh, made available to me. Uh, I will push those out through the channel. I thank you very much for enjoying this content along with me. If you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share this information with anybody out there that you know may be interested in this opportunity as presented. Guys, thanks again so much for tuning in for the totality of this video, and good luck in your investment future.